The number of COVID-19 cases in the U.S. has surpassed 4.5 million, with the U.S. CDC predicting over 170,000 deaths by mid-August. The news comes as Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's leading infectious diseases expert, attended a lengthy congressional hearing on the coronavirus response, where he offered common sense answers. Why is common sense not common at all in the United States at this moment, and possibly in some other parts of the world? While well, the top Chinese respiratory expert, Zhong Nanshan, received China's highest state honor, Dr. Fauci has been sidelined by the White House. Why the discrepancy, and what has fueled anti-science, anti-common sense sentiment in the U.S. amid the COVID-19 pandemic? Joining me to discuss this is Dr. Eric Ding, epidemiologist and senior fellow at the Federation of American Scientists. Uh, Dr. Ding, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. So let's take a look at President Trump's uh, uh, recent tweet where he said more cases for the U.S. than Europe is because we do much more testing than any other country in the world. If we had no testing or bad testing, we would show very few cases. So that's like, I cover my eyes, I don't want to see the problem, so the problem wouldn't be there. Uh, I am I reading it correctly, or is there some other way to understand this that uh, can actually make sense? Well, he's saying that uh, we find more cases because we dig further. And that's only very minor, partially true. We find more cases because there are more cases in the forest. Um, and of course, if you don't look in the forest, you're not going to find cases. But we know that uh, the cases are rising, and we know the epidemic is rising because the epidemic is cases is rising faster than the rise in testing. And so the testing backlog is getting worse. Yeah. And, and positivity is going higher. So we know there's an epidemic. Yeah. So basically, you're saying it's it's only, you know, partially true, uh, or some element of it. It makes sense, but overall, it doesn't reflect the picture, the large picture. But and yet, this kind of tweet is getting out there, and it's getting uh, tens, even hundreds of thousands of uh, likes and retweets. Um, what does this kind of tweet um, do on the psyche of the ordinary Americans who? Uh, many of them continue to support this president regardless of what happens uh, um, yeah. because of the pandemic. Yeah. Like my team have tried debunking it many, many times. But what happens is obviously he holds a bigger microphone. And, you know, online social media is very uh, bifurcated, it's very divided. Those who are in his echo chamber will believe him. And, and similarly believe his hydroxychloroquine and other misinformation he spins, while the scientific community has their own echo chamber, and some of these right and left wings don't talk. So unfortunately, th this is how so much misinformation, not just around testing, but also hydroxychloroquine and masks, have devolved into two sides and become politically polarized, even when science say they shouldn't be. Hmm. Uh, I have been joined by Professor Chen Hong, Executive Director of the East China Normal University's Asia Pacific Studies Center. Professor Chen, thank you for joining us. So, something that truly wonders, has been wondering uh, me is the, is the seeming lack of common sense among many people. For instance, still there are people who are, who are talking on Twitter that, wow, children can actually wear masks. Whereas in China, that has been the, the, common, the most common scene for the past few months. So exactly what factor or what factors are responsible for the appalling lack of common sense, apparently, in the U.S. society at this moment? I think actually there are multi, you know, uh, factors and variety of factors contributing to the current dire situation in which people are simply, you know, in need of information. We're in, pathetically, you know, we're in the age of uh, information, but people actually are simply in a lack of credible information. Oftentimes, you know, we see sensationalism, you know, exaggeration, distortion, you know, double standard in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the, uh, you know, Western media. And those media have been you know, misinformation, you know, serving as misinformation and also misguiding the public and also the uh, policy, policy you know, makers. We in China actually used to think that the media can be, you know, uh, serving, you know, in a way, you know, to be unbiased and unbalanced. But now actually, you know, the 
true facts is that actually a variety of mainstream and even you know the social media you know outlets actually simply as even you know, Trump in this way is sometimes quite correct in saying that actually those are fake news or in his new invention you know lame 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 news you know yeah. some you know the uh, of those uh, you know uh, news travel quite fast in a viral way and they contain rumors such as 5G technology has caused the, the coronavirus and facial masks contain an antenna to track people's movements such ridiculous stories could the travel and spread among yeah. large number of people. What wonders me, however, is the ability, the kind of checks mm. and balances that the, the powerful, the open and free media that's supposed to have on misinformation, mm. disinformation, or the abuse of um, executive power, for instance, uh, Dr. Yes. Ding. And yet it seems that uh, in the United States, at least this time alone, or when it comes to um, President, checking President Trump's um, power, it has not been very effective and uh, um, that seems to have been a factor, a contributing factor to the skyrocketing number of casualties. Yeah. Well, no one can really take away Donald Trump's Twitter. That's just, uh, it, people have tried, they have all failed, people have given up. Uh, it is his style, it is his, it is his medium. Uh, but what we can what we can still do is work with the governors. You know, even if there's uh, really poor leadership at the federal level in the U.S., the way it's set up, governors can put in mask mandates. They can put in the lockdown rules. They can put in the school closures. So Trump can be as incompetent as he can. And obviously, there's if he was more coherent, he could actually. Uh, be more effective uh, and nationally, but governors on the lower level can still help. But the problem is many of the conservative governors with Republican uh, who are loyal to Trump do not want to do shutdowns, do not want to put mask, statewide mask mandates. And with, without that, the epidemic will just keep going because you know, major, uh, only of course. Uh, uh, like 60 to 70 percent of the U.S. wears masks. Yeah. Uh, can we say can we say there is a, a, a lack of leadership or even a wrong leadership when it comes to managing the pandemic, Eric? Once again, and then uh, Professor Chen. Yeah, I think I think that's very obvious. I think Trump is just the worst president at this moment to handle a pandemic. You know, yesterday in the Axios uh, interview that was released when he was faced that there's a thousand deaths a day in the US, he, he, his response is, it is what it is. And when wow. uh, asked why is the US such a bad response, he tried to say, well, we actually have a really low case fatality ratio. But when presented with the fact that, you know, US is one of the highest mortality rates, he refuses to acknowledge it. So ref denying science, denying evidence, not listening to Fauci right. and muzzling him is just part of what has led to the terrible pandemic response. Yeah, but uh, uh, Professor Chen, um, let's be fair. Can we also say that the Democrats might have also politicized this, this virus? Well, I think actually the, uh, now is certainly not a time for uh, either parties to uh, politicize or take political advantage out of the current crisis. To uh, contribute to the previous question, I think actually another thing about American leadership is actually there's too much interference from the uh, politicians in, you know, some areas they are simply not, you know, their arena, Trump, Pence and others, they are simply not scientists, they are simply not public health experts. But from time to time they act, uh, act like experts experts and bluntly and arbitrarily interfere with the actual and specific maneuver of the process like uh, uh, what Dr. Fauci has been doing. So not only actually do they interfere, they often make irresponsible decisions directly which would only sabotage but what is so difficult? those uh, uh, efforts. Yeah, I mm. wonder what is so difficult to let the scientists, let people who know what they're talking about give advice to a country. Eric. Well, the problem is scientists like Fauci do not have an actual policy or political power. They have a voice, they have a microphone, a soapbox, but they don't actually have power. It's for, to invoke the Defense Production Act, like Wartime Production Act, for masks, it requires the president to do that. For many other things, 
uh, you know, basic income for everyone to support them during lockdowns, that requires an act of Congress. All, so all these um, food uh, benefits and all these kind of things requires Congress. And for the governors for lockdowns, it requires governors, which again are political, because those who are loyal to Trump are, have kind of pledged fealty to him not to do full lockdowns and not to do full mask mandate. If anything, Georgia governor actually, actually has a rule that blocks masks mandates in cities and counties in Georgia, even if the cities and counties wanted them. So that is, again, political interference. Scientists do not have power. Scientists, the CDC has been kneecapped this and is, silenced yeah, so many Yeah, this is times. unbelievable. So this um, is where... Yeah, it, because, because you yeah. know, you do have the best scientists, right, in the world. You do have people who are like you, who, who are fighting all the, all the time, who are top-notch experts, and yet uh, the, common, the lack of common sense is just rampant, Eric. Yeah, it is, it is just rampant, because sciences just get rolled over. You know, just, you know, we want to collect data on the hospital hospitalization data. See, the Trump administration took that power away from the CDC, which has been collecting this data every week for 15 years and now put, put it in the hands of a private contractor that is controlled by the Trump's administration. Mm. All these things, uh, it's just p total political power moves. And this is why this authoritarian right. approach, um, silencing scientists, is really harming us yeah. right now. And uh, we have this pandemic. Wow, to hear this word coming out of you to describe the United States society. Um, Professor Chen, any takeaway from what we have discussed for other societies really to heed and to caution against. Mm -hmm. 20 seconds, please. Well, okay, so if you compare Dr. Fauci to his uh, Chinese counterparts like Dr. Zhong Nanshan, Dr. Gaofu, or Zhang Wenhong, you will see a big difference. In China, actually, the top leaders and administrators, although, you know, Dr. Zhong Nanshan do not have, to, they do not have any particular power, but actually the top leaders and administrators and public, the uh, public, listen to those experts and trust their advisors. But, like in uh, the uh, the United States, you know, simply, you know, you know, the, uh, they can be, you know, uh, strenuously, you know, right. being abused and okay. insulted and threatened by the State Department. So that is yeah. actually well, the biggest the underlying, outrage. Yeah, the underlying us. thing is, if these scientists are not listened to, there will be an outcry on social media, on the media, by the public like hell. So, um, uh, yeah, surprisingly, it's like that in China, right? Anyway, many thanks to Dr. Eric Ding and many thanks to Professor Cheng Hong. With that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point with me, Lu Xin. Follow me with uh, Lu Xin in Beijing. Hashtag, thanks for watching. You've got The Point.